Hey guys, my name is Uma and in this video, I will be giving five tips for new and aspiring software developers that I wish I knew when I was just starting out. Let's get started. So the first tip is to figure out your why. This tip mostly applies to people who are thinking about getting into software development. It may seem like a cliche, but I strongly believe that before you try to get into software development, you need to figure out why you want to get into software development. It may be something you find interesting and want to learn more about, or it's something you genuinely have a passion for. You may also be changing careers or switching majors to become a software developer because of the opportunities in the industry or the relatively high paying jobs. Or it may be a combination of everything I just mentioned and more. And that's okay. I say this because when things start to get tough and challenging, your why will be the most important motivation that will keep you going. This applies to other aspects of life as well. Starting a diet, going to the gym, learning a new instrument, or studying a new skill usually starts out easy and fun and interesting. But people often quit two to three weeks into the process, either because things got hard or they lost motivation and found it boring. The reason you choose to do something is usually the fuel that keeps you going when things start to get hard. I was an aerospace engineering major and switched to software engineering for a couple of reasons. The main reason was because I genuinely found software engineering interesting. I was excited and still am excited about the countless applications of software engineering in various industries. When things got hard and challenging, my intrinsic motivation for getting into software and wanting to learn more about it kept me coming back. Figuring out your why will definitely be worth it in the long run, not just for software development, but for anything you endeavor to do. The second tip is to learn to get comfortable with the abstract. A lot of people say software, computer science, and computer engineering are generally hard fields. I think this is true, but in my opinion, they are hard because they are abstract. This was something that I had to get used to early on, and once I did, it definitely helped me keep progressing. You see, depending on your background, you may have been raised around computers and even used them to play video games, listen to music, or watch movies and more. That's one aspect of computers. The other aspects of computers we do not see, in my opinion, is the abstract part. We have always been told that everything in the computer is binary, ones and zeros, but what does that even mean? We are used to regular math where 1 plus 1 is 2, but in computer terms, binary, 1 plus 1 is 1 zero. In addition, we then have to learn languages that we will use to talk to the computer and give it instructions. Additionally, there is more than one of these languages, with new ones coming up, each with their own syntax and specific use cases. But at the end of the day, all the languages compile down to ones and zeros. We now have to learn data structures and algorithms and start doing complicated math, solving for time and space complexity, where we imagine things going to infinity. We then have to prove that our imagination is correct. It may seem like I'm over-exaggerating, but trust me, I'm not. Everything I just mentioned is true, and it's only a fraction of what we come across while learning. A lot of people would have gotten lost at where 1 plus 1 is 1 zero, because it's something we're not used to. I know I was. <laughs> the point I'm making here is you have to come into software development with an open mind, ready to see things that you may not have seen before, hear and type things that may not make sense at the moment, but adjusting and getting comfortable with the abstract nature of the field until you get used to things. It's not like chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, or physics, where everything is tangible and the math you are doing applies to what you can see. In physics, you can pick up an apple and drop it and see the effects of gravity. In chemistry, you can mix two chemicals together and see the result of the reaction taking place right in front of you. But software is different and requires your imagination for a good amount of it. Some of the concepts may not make sense at first, but by sticking with it, reading more about it, and most importantly, trying to find ways to relate it and compare it to what you already know in the non-abstract world will help you get comfortable with the abstract nature of the field. I'll give an example. When I was learning data structures, I had a hard time remembering the order of operations for a stack. My instructor at the time related a stack to a stack of plates, 
stating that if we had a stack of plates and wanted to add more to it, we would probably add to the top of the plates. And if we wanted to take away from the stack, we would take the item on top of the stack. Hence, the last item that we added into the stack is the first item that we take out of the stack. To this day, I still use this analogy to remember the operations of a stack and to explain it to other people. As I stated previously, coding and computer science may seem hard, but I believe it's because of the abstract nature. It's not something we see every day, and a lot of it requires getting used to concepts that we don't see or even think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Being comfortable with the abstract nature of software and finding ways to relate it to everyday life will help you as you learn to code. The third tip is to pay attention to the details when you start learning. Everything we know how to do is from past experience. We learn by doing. This is no different in coding. Depending on how you are learning, this will look different. If you are taking a class to learn specific concepts, be sure to learn those concepts now so you have a strong foundation moving forward. Ask your instructor to clarify questions so you fully understand the concepts. Questions regarding smaller concepts you may have overlooked usually come up during technical interviews and it's better you have the knowledge and understanding about the concept early on so when you're preparing for an interview, you will simply be doing a recap on what you already know. However, if you're teaching yourself how to code, this might be a little hard because we tend to jump into the action and not necessarily understand the process. I will give an example. I learned JavaScript and web development myself. And when I was learning, I made a lot of API calls. I knew what an API call was because I used it all the time. During an interview, I was asked what a promise is, but I could not answer. After the interview, I went and looked into it and realized that API calls use promises all the time. I used it all the time, but did not bother to learn the details of what happens in an API call. Whatever process or concepts you are learning about, try to go above and beyond to learn the little details. This will help you in the future to understand why something is done a specific way, and it will definitely help you stand out. The fourth tip is trying not to specialize in the beginning. Now, unless you are absolutely sure of what you want to do with regards to software, I would advise you not to specialize. This is not to say you can't have preferences. I would suggest you try to explore as many fields as you can in software engineering before committing. If you already have your mind made up, that's fine as well. People often see the main fields of software development as front end and back end. This is true, but there's a lot more to it. The type of software you create and the industry you create it in differs a lot. Being a front-end developer for a tech company might be different from being a front-end developer at a non-tech company like Nike or Walmart. Similarly, front-end work on a mobile app is different from front-end work on a website. Same concept for different application. Explore as many fields as you can and be open to learning more. The only constant is change and nothing changes and transforms like software. Every year, new technologies and frameworks come up and you have to keep up with them. The way of doing things two or three years ago is completely different from today. For example, companies used to have servers in data centers that they would own and manage. Deploying an application would require a team of developers and also a team of SRE engineers, site reliability engineers. Nowadays, with the rise of cloud computing, Companies have ditched the idea of owning the actual servers and have opted to use the cloud providers. There are still SRE engineers, but their role looks a lot different. They advise on what the best practices are and are available for help, but the process of deploying your application usually falls on the developer, meaning it will be valuable for you to have experience using one of these cloud providers. If you specialize in doing only one aspect of software development, it might be hard for you to learn other aspects and this might put you at a disadvantage. There will always be a new technology out there that you might have to learn to keep up with changing times. I would suggest wearing the hat of a software developer and having preferences on the parts of a project you would like to work on, but being open to learn more. The last and final tip is to be patient and take breaks from time to time. We all learn by doing and learning takes time. 
experience is the best teacher. However, everybody's journey is different. We all learn in different capacities and at different times. It may take me two hours to learn something and may take another person one hour to learn the exact same thing. Being patient with yourself when things are not going well or when you have a bug you can't fix is something you will have to learn. Even the most experienced developers make mistakes and errors. Like everything you try to do, the first few times will suck. The first code will probably be a basic print hello world and that's okay. The first project might not be the nicest, but guess what? It gets better and you would have learned something because you tried. Continue the process day by day while increasing the complexity of the projects little by little. If something is not working, try fixing it by using the resources available to you. Google, Stack Overflow, and other people. If that does not work and you've been stuck for a while, step away from the computer and take a nap. Go to the gym, do yoga, take a walk, or whatever it is that you need to do, then come back and reevaluate. I can't tell you the number of times I have been stuck on something, left it, and came back the next day and figured out the problem within two minutes. A fresh set of eyes and a positive mindset goes a long way. As a matter of fact, as I record this video, there is a bug at work that I can't seem to figure out. I have left it for tomorrow because I have spent so much time on it and I am hoping when I get back to it tomorrow, I can easily figure it out. It will not be easy, but it's definitely worth it. Love and take care of yourself. From time to time, look back and see where you came from and give yourself a pat on the back and let your why be your fuel as you keep moving forward. If I and a million other people can do it, then I have no doubt that you can do it as well. And that's it. Those are the five main tips that I have for new and aspiring developers. If you have any additional tips, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have a question or need help with the project, feel free to reach out. I am more than happy to help. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.